Good morning! Hello, hello, hello fellow humans! So excited to see you again. It is the weekend. I'm going to be doing a little bit of meal prep today. However, first I'm meeting a friend. We are actually going to a half day retreat for meditation. So to get our meditation practice next level and then when i come back i'm going to be doing the meal prep so i'll check in again with you then um i just want to quickly show you my hair i'm not happy with the color at the minute um i've ordered some red shampoo and conditioner now has anybody used this it's because my hair has a little bit of a green tint to it and it is the blue that's underneath that's showing through apparently with the blonde i think i mean you can't really tell as much today i've used the new contraption i got on last week's vlog if you saw that I got a new contraption <laughs> from the charity shop for five pounds, a bargain. I can't resist. I'll show it you. This is it, five pounds. And it's been pat tested. <laughs> Getting very close to my holidays now. Now I've just got weighed this morning. I don't usually get weighed between meetings. However, I couldn't make my meeting last week and I am trying at my best this week to lose a couple of pounds before my holiday, I it's quite difficult for me to lose a couple of pounds. Just sticking to plan this week, making sure I'm making lots of low point foods, hence the meal prep. My goal before I went on holiday was to be 17 pounds down and I'm a couple of pounds away from that. So I'm hoping that this week I smash it out of the park. So I'm starting to definitely see a difference now. So as you can see, my bum, I am starting at some new exercising, an exercise, uh, some Pilates next week. So we'll see how that goes. I've got the washing basket behind me. Why didn't I move that? Yeah, it's going quite well. Like I say, um, 15 pounds down now. Weight Watchers did set my goal. My BMI is still overweight at the moment if you go on BMI. Now I know there's a lot of controversy around BMI and you know, it's uh, it does seem quite an outdated thing. However, I am still overweight with my BMI. To be in the normal range, I would need to lose another 10 pounds. So I definitely want to lose those 10 pounds and Weight Witches have set my goal weight a little bit lower than that. So I've still got another stone to lose yet. So I'm gonna keep going at it. Let's keep going. So I will see you when I get back. Here I'm just prepping ready for the day. These magnesium tablets, I've started taking one in the morning. My friend recommended them and she said they give her lots of energy. I'd also heard on a podcast that a lot of us are low on magnesium. So I thought I'd give them a try. I'm just blitzing up some imperfect berries. Do you get the imperfect ones? They're a little bit cheaper, aren't they? And they're just as good. <laughs> and I feel sorry for them in the supermarket. Uh, with some almond milk and some protein powder. I could do with up in my protein powder game if anybody has any recommendations. And I blitzed that all together with some yogurt. And I took that with me to the meditation. I also got some cottage cheese with pineapple and ate that as well for my <laughs> as well before I went in to the meditation center I did not want my stomach growling right I've got my cottage cheese with pineapple we are ready to set off Now guys from the meditation at the Buddhist Centre they were holding a half day meditation course there I don't know much about the religion 
but that's where it was held. Ali's I've inserted some clips. It was three hours, it was a little bit uncomfortable in the chair and I'm, as most people, I'm not used to sitting for three hours at a time uh, in the same position. It has inspired me to meditate more at home. I do feel better, so it's worth it for me. It's just fitting it in, isn't it? And wouldn't you think it'd be easy because you're just sat, you're just sat, you've only got to sit down and do it. Usually you have to sacrifice something else to do it, but I think it'll be worth it for me. So, right, I'm gonna get on with the meal prep. So I've got two very large butternut squashes that need using up. I'm gonna make some hummus, so I wanna roast some carrots for dipping. I'm not keen on raw carrot, but I like them roasted. I'm gonna make a chickpea squash potato and spinach stew to get used up some of this squash. Ooh. A cake, a loaf cake with some squash in it as well. I'm gonna have a go at that. Chorizo and red pepper and onion pizza for tea with the two ingredient dough. I'm gonna make a chorizo and lentil soup as well for the week, so I'll show you that. I began by prepping the squash for the curry and the cake. This is my favourite way of preparing squash. So I just cut it down the middle. I wash the skin because I eat the skin as well. So I've taken the seeds out. I put it directly onto the oven shelf for 40 minutes. And then I flip it over and give it another 40 minutes in the oven. And also I popped a bulb of garlic in to roast. I'm going to stop now for a minute because I am starving. I was going to make the hummus and have some hummus for my lunch. However... I've decided that I'd rather have roasted garlic in it rather than um, just chopped garlic. So I've put that in the oven, it's going to take a little bit longer. What I'm going to have instead, I'm going to have some laughing cow, two trains of laughing cow on the currant seed and oat rivita. These are really good. I know it shows it with a sweet top in here, but I'm having cheese on. And they look like that. A rye cracker. But Ravita is known as a diet food, isn't it? Like as a weight uh, old school Weight Watchers food, like eighties Weight Watchers food. So it put you off a little bit, but they're really nice, actually. These ones. I think the sweetness of them makes them tasty, and I just need something really quick. So that's what I'm having right now. The quickest snack. So two Rivitas, two points, two Laughing Cow Triangles, two points, a bag of the Harvest Snaps, two points, and a banana, zero points. So it's six points overall for that. And I know I'm picking at this food. Now I've got to taste it all, otherwise how will I know if it's good? My darling husband is making me a brew. What a good lad. So the butternut squash and the garlic are roasting in the oven. The garlic takes about half an hour. So I got that out after half an hour and I weighed out 180 grams of lentils and then I left those to soak. I know you don't have to. I follow Sadia on Pick Up Lime's uh, YouTube channel and she raves about soaking your grains and your pulses before you use them. So i have soaking them just for a little while before I put them into my soup. And then I measured out 100 gram of chorizo and I diced that up. As you can see, I took the skin off first and then I diced that up into little cubes. Then I chopped one yellow onion and a couple of cloves of garlic. Oh, can you see there on my windowsill that I have a rose plant that my hubby got me for Valentine's. I think it was for Valentine's. Uh, I forgot to water it. You, you can't do that, can you, with uh, plants? <laughs> I am so not green fingered. <laughs> I made up 750 mil of vegetable stock. Now, wouldn't you think this would be beef stock? I seem to get my stocks very mixed up because I'm always using beef stock in things that are vegetable based and vegetable stock in things that are a little bit more meaty. So here I got the chorizo out of the pan. I popped it onto a plate and then the oil that had come out of that chorizo, I fried my onions with the garlic and the paprika. What else could I do? Having a bit of a sing song there. Could you guess the movie? Do you know what movie that's from? Comment down below, eh? If you know. If you don't have young children, you might struggle with that one. 
added my lentils and I've given them a good stir and then I've added a tin of tomatoes and the 750ml of veg stock. These are my carrots that I'm roasting. Again, I'm leaving the skin on. I've started doing that with a few vegetables. I've heard a lot of the goodness is in the skin. Nice carroty fingers. And I sprayed those with firelight and a little bit of salt and they went into the oven. As you can see, I flipped over my butternut squash as well. And then I moved on to making my hummus. So I added two thirds, I'd say, of a tin of chickpeas a be cooked beetroot and it's so easy isn't it cooked beetroot some salt and the roasted garlic a sprinkle of cumin a tablespoon of tahini and a splash of olive oil and I blitzed it all together I think hummus it benefits from quite a lot of salt doesn't it I think you need to add that salt to bring out the flavours and I did add some jalapenos, I didn't even chop these, I wanted that really spicy flavour so I just added some to the top. For the whole dish of hummus it was four points, this did me two portions in this dish so it was two points each. My soup here, the cooker now is starting to get a little bit worse for wear with clean wise, I gave that um, a good stir and added the crispy chorizo and then I turned the heat off because that was the soup done. So there's our lentil and chorizo soup. I've got my potatoes on to boil for my vegetable curry. <laughs> I love this. Oh my goodness. I hate eating sweets. It's so sweet. I'm like, you know, it looks like syrupy. Mmm. How good is but not squash when it's just roast? You just chuck it straight in, you don't need any oil. Put it straight in and it turns out like this and I've got my peppers roasted for topping my pizza for tonight mm. it was so good. I'm not as bothered about the flesh but that skin mm. I've just bit I'm picking it all off I just keep eating it mm. okay so on to the squash cake now this cake is a good one so for this I added pure fear Baker's Secret Soft Brown Sugar Alternative. <laughs> it's a mouthful that, isn't it? And I added 100 grams of that to 80 grams of low fat spread. And then I beat it until it was light and fluffy. And then I added the eggs one at a time. So all together, there were three eggs in this cake. I'd recommend this for sure if you have some butternut squash you would like to use up. It was super squidgy, super indulgent. It felt like a real treat. I really enjoyed this. And it did get eight portions out of it. I didn't feel hard done by. I mean, my husband was eating it as well. That's the soft brown sugar alternative that I used. That's what the packaging looks like. And this is my self-raising flour. So I added 250 gram of self-raising flour in batches and kept whisking that in. The texture of this was properly cakey. I, you'll see in a minute that I am licking these whisks. They were yummy. So I'm adding my butternut squash. I have a little taste of it again there. I'm adding my butternut squash. This gave it a really nice moist texture and a lovely colour. I love that colour. Oh yeah, I was licking these for days. If I didn't edit this down, I was stood at that sink for a good five minutes. I got every bit of that cake mixture off and into my mouth. <laughs> so this is a little bit of a bish bash bosh job here, isn't it? I see people on the TV and they line their cake tins so nicely and I just push mine in and then I always think, oh well, the cake mixture just pushes it out towards the sides. I probably wouldn't win any awards would I on Great British Bake Off with this, but it does its job. It rose, it was lovely scraping all that beautiful cake mixture into there and then that had to actually go into the oven for an hour and a quarter at 180. So here you just see me chopping up 700 grams of new potatoes and I cut those in half and then I boiled them. Laurie is just chatting to me there. So I just did those until they were tender and then I chopped up a yellow pepper and a head of cauliflower for this curry. 
I gave my big saucepan a spray with the fry light and then I added my lazy garlic so I did a couple of teaspoons of the lazy garlic I'm getting pretty lazy now with the lazy garlic I do quite like using it and I added my vegetables to the pan and then I added this tikka masala spice paste this spice paste is cracking it makes your vegetables taste amazing it's so much better than curry powder I know it's quite high points I think Jamie Oliver uses that Patax one as well so if it's good enough for Jamie it's good enough for me half a jar of that Patax is eight points so it's on the higher point side but it, it's worth it I added my new potatoes to the pan and left those to cook in the saucepan for a little while meanwhile I used the rest of the flesh of the butternut squash the flesh from one and a half squashes and I added that to my food processor along with 750 ml of vegetable stock and then I blitz that and this makes a cracking sauce for curry because it's nice and thick and it gets all the curry flavours from that tikka paste and it's really tasty. Oh look at the dismembered flesh of the butternut squash on the side there on the baking tray. Then I cut up a couple of chilies. Now I put half the chilies into the curry and half the chilies on our little pizzas for tonight. This was a Saturday night so we were having pizzas. My chorizo, I peeled it again and then I chopped. Once it was chopped I just measured out two points worth for myself. On to the two ingredient door. Now I just got the recipe from Weight Watchers. This is their recipe and I found it a little bit too sticky. I had to add a little bit more flour as you can imagine the flour is so high point so I was reluctant to do so oh there's my carrots coming out of the oven there it was 225 grams of non-fat Greek yogurt and 125 grams of self-raising white flour I would add a little bit less of the Greek yogurt probably 190 gram uh, just to make sure you don't end up with a sticky very sticky dough like I did so back to this monster of a curry now. I've added the chickpeas. So I all I did, I added the remaining of the can that I had open from the hummus. So it was only a third of a can. You could add more for sure. You could add as many as you want. They're free, aren't they? Um, I then stuffed a load of spinach in there. Getting those iron levels up. And I bubbled that another for another five or six minutes just to get that spinach wilted. Then back to the pizzas and I'm using my sauce for my soup here. I'm topping with sweet corn, chili, chorizo, cheese, a bit of ham here. I roasted some red peppers in the oven. So just chopped up a red pepper, fry light, roasted that for about 25 minutes and I topped the pizzas with that as well. And I put two different types of cheeses on here. I had the light mozzarella and some parmesan. So really strong parmesan, but mozzarella for that mouthfeel. I really enjoyed this. I know that it is small, but it gave me enough satisfaction having that pizza. And then I did have some of the hummus afterwards. So I, I was really pleased with my pizza. I enjoyed it. Our squash cake is looking beautiful. Now this should be eight portions. I'm going to melt some of the skinny food core spread and then I'm going to drizzle that on the top. And that will be seven points per portion. Have you seen the state of my cooker now? Oh, just about to start cleaning up. Anyway, I've got the lovely chorizo and red lentil soup oh it's tastes smoky and salty really tasty i've already had a taste of that and that is four points per portion four portions there then i've got my curry again four points per portion you get quite a lot in there my spinach hasn't quite wilted down yet i've put the rest of the chopped chili that i used to top the pizzas in there as well give it an extra spicy little kick 
Um, I love the veg curry. I just think that's great. And I actually eat cold sometimes at my desk at work. Oh, goodness, there's a lot of splashing. <laughs> well, I'm just glad I've got it done. I can clean everything down at the end counter, but I've got all these foods now for the week. So should be, I think that'll do me six portions in there and that's four points each and then the pizzas top these with the half the chili and i used the some of the juice from the soup as my tomato base um because it was like i say salty and smoky and tomatoey so i thought oh, i'm not making a tomato base up now and sometimes if you just use tomato puree uh, and a little bit of ketchup mixed together, which is sometimes, and some mixed herbs, which is what I do sometimes. It's got quite a raw, acidic taste. Whereas this, because it's been cooked, that sauce, I just thought I'm just going to put a bit of that on. So, Laurie doesn't like chorizo, so he's had ham and sweet corn. Paul doesn't like sweet corn. That's the thing, at least you can customize these. He doesn't like sweet corn, so he's just got red pepper and chorizo and cheese, and I've got. A bit of everything oh and he's got a bit of chili on his and i've got a bit of everything uh, apart from the ham there i've just got chorizo so with mine because mine's quite a bit smaller than the others that is nine points i've piled it high with goodies and i will really enjoy it so what i will do i'll probably have some of my hummus and carrots after uh carrot sticks after for a couple of points that will be 11 points I've had a little bit of a tidy up. That dishwasher's on now, as you can imagine. <laughs> Dark now here, it's 6.30 p.m. Saturday night. So we are gonna settle down now. I'm gonna make those, I'm gonna put those pizzas in the oven and we're gonna have those in front of the TV. If I want a piece of cake afterwards, I can take a few points out of my weeklies. And I'm going to top the cake with some of this milky hazelnut spread. These spreads are cracking. They are really good. Out of all the Skinny Food Core products, the three that I would recommend the most is the biscuits. I'll just, I'll just show you. Number one, this biscuit flavour, which tastes like Biscoff for your coffee. Certainly, I have one of those most days. I have a coffee with a bit of oat milk in and some of this. And then also... The chocolate drops, four points, really tasty. And the spreads. So I have this one, I have a salted caramel one, and I have a chocolate orange one. They are cracking, they're one point per teaspoon. You could have that on um, Ravita. On the packaging, on that Ravita, it showed chocolate spread with some strawberries on top. You could do that, for sure, you could do that. <laughs> So these are really cracking and you can melt them, you can dip fruit in them, really good. Mm -hmm. Definitely check out their website. If you have a sweet tooth, Skinny Food Co. And you're in the UK. I think they might ship anyway to the US. You'd have to check. Meal prep to help. Hey guys. So today is the day after I've just come back from Pilates. Whew. <laughs> I do not have very good inner strength, any core strength. Core strength. I was shaking like that all the way through. I was like juddering and jittering. And I just thought, my goodness me. And to be fair, I don't enjoy it as much as I would do say dancing about. Goodness me, I do feel like I could do with increasing my core strength. I'm gonna now have some hummus on some crackers with some pickles. That's exactly what I'm wanting. I'm very hungry. So I'm gonna get a big drink of water, have some hummus and crackers. Tonight, we're just gonna have either the curry or the soup. Some hummus, which looks a little bit like pate, and the crackers, and the pickles, and the fruits. A good snack for after working out, I think. And we had some of the cake yesterday, and it was so good. 
I ended up two points over. I ended up at 25 points yesterday, but I made three points uh, with my steps. So I'm going to leave it there for this week. I hope you're having a great week and I will see you next time. Bye guys.